Hello everyone, this is Showtime 112. Iraqi Air Force initially relied on British aircraft types such as Hawker Hunter. But by the time war against Iran began, the service was equipped almost exclusively with Soviet aircraft. Their main fighters were MiG-21s and MiG-23s, while ground attack units consisted of types such as Su-22 or MiG-23BN. But the connection with Western nations wasn't broken. In 1974, France was pushing their latest Mirage F-1 fighter to export markets, and a lot of effort was put into convincing the Iraqis that this was the right aircraft for them. The French finally succeeded in September 1975, once they sweetened the deal by including establishment of depot-level maintenance and engine overhaul capability in Iraq. The negotiations were however not complete until 1977, and the first deliveries were expected in 1980. Just like with all Mirage F1 exports, the Iraqi models received a special designation, EQ. E stood for Electronique, while Q represented Iraq. It was eventually delivered in several sub-variants. Compared to the standard Mirage F1C, the first delivered variant to Iraq designated EQ-2 had an improved navigation system, radar and radar warning receiver, plus the ability to carry then brand new Matra Super 530F radar guided missiles. The order also specified future delivery of recon pods, laser guided bombs, remora and Kaiman jammers, Cyril Eland pods and Martel anti-radar missiles. Most of these systems weren't fully developed at the time, and the Iraqis contributed funds for their completion. Another improved version, F1 EQ4, was ordered in late 1979. But no Mirage was delivered to Iraq by the time the war against Iran started in September 1980. After initial French reluctance and Iraqi pressure, the first examples arrived in early 1981. The first Iraqi Mirage squadron, however, only achieved readiness status in September of 1981. It couldn't have come soon enough for the Iraqi Air Force, struggling against Iranian fighter types such as F-4E and F-14, significantly more advanced than anything Iraq had. Although F-1 was technically a generation older than F-14, Iraqis still achieved some success in the well-known Operation Giraffe, when two Iranian Tomcats were shot down. Click on the recommendation link to learn more. Iraqi Mirages achieved some more success against Iranian aircraft and eventually began flying air-to-ground missions in 1982. Iran, on the other hand, operated three fighter types, of which the least capable one was F-5E Tiger II. This type was used for strikes into Iraqi territory, and its limited electronics equipment made it vulnerable to enemy fighters and surface-to-air missiles. After the initial high tempo of operations, Iranian F-5s were put into preservation mode, but they still flew offensive sorties. One such sortie was launched on 14 August 1986. Two Iranian F-5s were sent to bomb an Iraqi oil refinery near Soleimania. Throughout the war, both sides employed a lot of their assets trying to limit the other country's oil production. Refineries, storage tanks, ports and tankers were frequently attacked with variable levels of success. The two Iranian Tigers were flown by Colonel Yusef Samandarian and Captain Abbas Ramezani. They were scheduled to arrive to their target at 6 p.m. The sun was low and the two pilots heading west were struggling with visibility. As the two Iranian pilots approached their targets, they were welcomed by barrage fire. The lead plane was soon damaged, but it pressed on nevertheless. The 
both planes release their bombs. The lead plane was then damaged again, and the pilot had no choice but to eject. He was on a very low altitude and he eventually landed hard, injuring his spine. Yusef Samandarian was then captured by Iraqi soldiers. Abbas Ramazani observed as his leader's plane was losing altitude. He wasn't sure if he managed to eject or not, but there was nothing else he could do, so he continued back home. At the same time, a flight of four Iraqi Mirage F1s was attacking Iranian troops on the central front lines. A lone Iranian F-5 was spotted, and one of the mirages flown by Lt. Mohammed Nazar broke the formation and started chasing it. Nazar eventually came within range of his R-550 Magique and launched it. The missile hit. Abbas Ramezani realized he was hit and initially thought he could still control his plane. He assumed it was a SAM system that hit him. But then, his stick locked up, the airplane began to dive out of control and Ramezani ejected. Ramazani was seriously injured in the ejection, and he was soon discovered by the fighters of Patriotic Union of Iraqi Kurdistan. They sent him back to Iran, but he was unable to fly again because of his injuries. The Iranian side attributes this loss to a surface-to-air missile, but the Iraqis listed as a kill by their Mirage F-1 pilot, Lt. Nazar. In his testimonies, Ramazani mentions that he was hit by a SAM, although in one interview he did allow the possibility that it was an Iraqi fighter that hit him. F-5s weren't equipped with radar warning receivers that could determine identity of the attacker, so Iranian sources don't completely deny the possibility of an air-to-air -air kill. During the conflict with Iraq, Iran lost no less than 85 of its F-5s. 55 F-5 pilots were lost, 46 of them killed in action. 75 F-5s remained operational at the end of the war, about a half of them to see trainers or reconnaissance versions. As for the Mirage F-1, a total of 86 single-seat examples and 15 two-seaters were delivered to Iraq during the war. 25 of them were written off, and while they didn't score many air-to-air kills, they achieved some of the most important ones. 
The Type offered the Iraqis superior precision in navigation and weapons delivery over all the other types they used. Availability of jamming and eland pods significantly increased Iraqi Air Force offensive capability and enabled effective airstrikes into Iranian airspace. If you liked the video, be sure to press the like button. You can join our Patreon supporters or donate on PayPal. I have to point out that unless financial support from the viewers increases, this channel will likely cease to upload new content in near future as Google Ads and sponsors simply don't make the required effort sustainable. Thank you in advance and keep watching Showtime 112.